Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about buying a second home or a vacation home and how that works and what you should know. So here we go. Alright, so why are we talking about second homes and vacation homes? Well, after you've taken the time to actually buy a property, you might be thinking, you know what would be nice? A cabin in the woods or a condo at the beach or something like that. So when it comes to buying a second home, there are some things that you should know because people have used the idea of buying a second home to buy investment properties in the past, which is why there's a lot of scrutiny when you go to buy a second home or a vacation home. Um, and the scrutiny comes from the underwriting department because what they're looking for are people using, um, trying to use financing that's more favorable to the person that isn't accurate to what it is they're doing. Okay, so it's, it's the idea of occupancy. Occupancy comes up a lot when you're buying a home, especially if you own a home already, because you could say, I'm looking to buy a second home over here, and they're saying, no, that's obviously you buying an investment property and you're gonna rent that out. Or you say you're gonna move to it, but it doesn't make sense, it's smaller, it's further away from work. There's things that don't line up. So that's something that comes up with occupancy, and it's a big deal. It can kill a deal really quick if you're not upfront and honest about what you're doing, or if you just don't have it put together the right way. And what I mean by that is your loan officer usually will figure that out saying, look, they're purchasing this home over here as a second home and here are all the reasons why. So things to be aware with that. So when you're looking to buy that, a second home or a vacation home, usually if it's in a different type of area than you live in now. So if you live in the suburbs and you're looking and you wanna buy a second home in the mountains and you intend to spend almost half your time there, and that's one of the requirements, you have to prove that you're gonna be spending a good amount of time in that property. Um, and that's part of the story that you have to have to have around what it is you're doing. Um, you have to have that as a part of what you're doing. But if you live in the suburbs in the city and then you want to buy a second home that's a cabin up in the woods, that's totally doable. In most cases, that's doable. Now, the reason why there's a whole such a big thing between it being an investment property or it being, being a second home is that investment properties are, you have to have 20% down when you buy an investment property. And you have to have money, cash reserves, usually up to six months of what the total payment is, you have to have that saved up in your bank account. So there's more restrictions. The pricing is, it's a little bit more on the price when it comes to your interest rate. The cost of your loan will go a little higher. They're scrutinized a little differently when it's an investment. There's just, it's done differently than if you're just buying a second home. So that's why a lot of people have tried to say, I'm going to buy a second home and it's just a couple neighborhoods over and people say, that doesn't make any sense. You're not gonna spend half your time there you're gonna buy an investment property and that's what you're doing. So you wanna avoid that. So when you're looking for that, when you're looking to buy a second home, if it's in a different geographic location, it makes sense. If you have a job that requires you to spend time in another state, um, I work with clients that they literally spend half their time in like Texas or Tennessee working um, a different part of their job and then they're back home the other part of like the month. So it's like two weeks there and two weeks back. That makes sense if you want to own a house there as a second home because you're literally spending half your time there and it's going to be closer to your work than living in a different state. So that also makes sense. Um, vacation homes too, like if you're in California and you want to buy a home in Havasu because that's where people go to go up the river on boats and stuff. Um, you can usually justify that, be like this is my vacation home, I'm buying it as a second home. Um, it's in a different geographic location than where I am now, so on and so forth. So. The reason why I wanted to bring this up is because I've had files in the past, I've had people buying that have gotten caught up in financing a property as a second home and then later wanting to rent that house out and buy something else somewhere else. And what that does is it raises red flags because when you tell the lender, if you, the lender, you tell the company, I'm buying this home or I'm refinancing this home as a second home, it's very difficult to justify turning around and saying, oh no, wait, I wanted to use it as an investment because you you kind of just told the that mortgage company one thing and now you're doing something else maybe a little bit down the road if you want to do it you know a couple years later when there's been time and you've actually used it for what you said you use it for that's different um but if you're going to do it within you know a year or six months that's that's suspicious it's kind of like hey you were planning on doing this the whole time but you told us x and now you're doing this it's something you got to be aware of no matter who you work with even if you don't go back to the same lender, if you start to work with a different lender, they're gonna say, hey, what's up with this mortgage history that you have? They're gonna look into that because their occupancy is such a big deal. I need to reiterate that. So if you're looking to buy that second house, 
and whatever it is, you're just gonna qualify like you would, like you did for your main purchase. It's just now you're also gonna be hit with the full mortgage of whatever that second house is. There isn't really extra requirements other than you have to put 10% down. You can't put down three, three and a half or five, and it has to be conventional financing. You can't buy a second home with VA unless you already own a home with VA and you're, you're being stationed somewhere else. Usually that house is going to be sold and you're going to buy another one, but they don't always happen right at the same time. So sometimes you can actually have two VA loans at the same time, but for the most part, most people you can't do it that way. It'll be a conventional loan, 10% down. There's your second home. There you go. That's your, your haven, the place you go to, or it's the place that's more advantageous if you're going to school. If you have someone in your family going to school and they have to move back and forth, whatever that might be, that's just something that you have to discuss with your loan officer. So that's what I want to talk about today with buying a second home or an investment, uh, not an investment, a vacation home and what that means on a lender side so that you don't get caught in some kind of thing that makes you lose out on a deal or you have a different conception of what it is you can and can't do when it comes to uh, buying properties and what they are. So if you like this content, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you like it, um, go ahead and comment down below. I'd love to interact with more people. And if you have any questions, I'd love to interact through there. And um, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And I'm going to keep producing content like this and um, on different subjects when it comes to buying and refinancing and just financing in general and just things that things that you should know things that are helpful so alrighty that's it for me take care